Dread Knight Abyss characters are quite unique, despite the fact that every character can equip each single weapon type. In this video I want to go over all of the available characters in the technical test, showing the ultimate skills and kits, and we are going to start out with the main heroine of the game, which is Berenica. Let's quickly get this over with and go home. Surrender. Her ultimate summons her signature weapon, Emir, and this will override and replace her current melee weapon, whichever you have equipped, for the duration of her ultimate. If you build her the right way, she can stay half of the time roughly in her ultimate form, which makes her float mid-air and cleave. Her e-skill is a fast charging forward attack with her signature weapon and it can be spammed multiple times. Aside from the two active skills, each character has a passive ability and for Baranica this is when dealing damage with a sword there's a chance to restore sanity. So sanity is the main resource with which you can use skills and your ultimate, so it's quite huge. So. As I said, every character can equip every weapon type, however some characters have best passive abilities that strongly encourage you to use a specific weapon type. Next we have Hilda, which has been my personal favorite character of the game. She's a maid and fighting with plasma dirt expellers. She's dealing pyro damage and the way her kit works is basically every time you hit an enemy with her ultimate, you summon an additional dirt expeller, so one of these plasma dirt expellers, and their passive ability is that these plasma dirt expellers every three seconds shoot the enemy. And with your E skill you just make them circle around you and shoot plasma all the time. Very well. I'll follow your orders for now. Next we have Tabithi or Tabith, however would you pronounce. She has in my opinion the funniest ultimate and kit in the game. She's making use of tentacles that can grab and hold the enemies. And if you use her ultimate it will instantly summon 9 tentacles. That can be a maximum of 18 tentacles on the field. And basically like I said they can grab the enemy and your E skill makes them attack additionally and you can spend that a lot. So huge damage if you have those 18 tentacles up and it just looks mad silly and mad fun. The next character Truffle is kinda wild. She has a pet pig that she can summon, which is called Philbrot. So basically she can shoot it forward with her E skill and her ultimate she can ride on it and her passive gives you damage increase and damage taken decrease stacks up to 10 stacks based on how long you're already riding on the pick. So for our world exploration it's really great. You don't encounter enemies for, for a while and then you encounter enemies suddenly. You have like 10 damage stacks, can quickly kill the enemies and then just move on exploring. This is gonna hurt! The special commissaries here! Feast till forever! It's my honor. Yuming is an electro damage dealer which revolves around plunging. His ultimate skill summons a dragon that circles him, which makes him stun in moon. With her E skill, you can jump high in the sky, and then with your melee attack, you can plunge down and deal a huge amount of plunge damage. Interesting is that you can spam the E skill, so you can make double, triple, or four times jump. I'll take it. Oh, 
Let me provide medicine for the battles to come. Next we have the dedicated healer of the game, Fushu. But she's not only a healer, she is also super super strong. Her ultimate gives her 80% attack speed increase. I mean, just look at it. Her E skill summons a sphere called Yunchi. You can have out two of them at the same time and those will cover health for you and your party members. Also when one of your teammates is dying, that sphere will rescue the dying teammate, but it's only one time per battle per teammate. I wish my journey wouldn't end so soon. Psyche is an animal damage dealer that transforms during her ultimate into a levitating cannon, which kind of reminds me a little bit of a Gundam, so she can fire at her enemies while freely flying around, stay out of range of melee attacks, and additionally her E skill, she can place a decoy that enemies will attack, so with her it's really easy to avoid taking damage all that much. Next we have Rebecca, which is a hydro damage dealer. So first of all, she can summon three jellyfish. They are called Aurelia Aurita, and she can summon three of them at the same time. And they deal quite a lot of damage by themselves. And her passive ability makes her inflict poison on the target that stacks up to six times. And her ultimate basically deals more damage on enemies based on the number of stacks they have. Are you inviting me on a date? Aroma. Or else you won't live long enough to pay me. Pay for wasting my time. Who's the target today? Last but not least, we have Lynn, which is a pyro gunner. I really like the idea of mixing gunner and archer design here. I really think they outdid themselves on this one. And her kit basically revolves around her signature weapon. When she activates her ultimate, her ranged weapon gets swapped out for dual wielding guns that are pretty strong. In her ultimate state she is not able to move anymore, but she can constantly spam her ultimate attack and the attack speed will get faster and faster and stack up, up to 35 stacks. So huge damage, huge attack speed. Her E skill is a single shot with her signature weapon. For most characters in the game you will see that they always have like an on-demand damage skill and a self buff. And for some characters sometimes the E skill is the self buff, like for Hilda, and for other characters like for Lin, the ultimate is the self buff. The activation for the self buff is usually less costly, but it will cost you more and more sanity as you keep up the ultimate or your self buff while the on-demand skill is st straight off the bat, like pretty expensive, but gives you damage. I think they did a really good job with making the characters very unique and different, especially the ultimate skills are kind of crazy for some of the characters. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, see ya.